You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows, visit electronicmediacollective.com. Welcome to a special episode of Four Distraction. This is the first episode of 2021. Happy New Year, Scott. Happy New Year to you as well, Adam. Uh, you've always reminded me of the New Year, baby. So it's fitting. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's honestly come and gone. It was an uneventful New Year. I don't know about you, but for me, I just kind of sat at home and drank. Obviously, there were no parties. We weren't going to go out. You know, that shit's kind of sailed away so to speak in 2020 so hopefully next year we'll party hardy in the new year but yeah 2021 is finally here yeah we uh the last several years we've been going to the same uh, get together for new year's eve it's been a it's been a lot of fun and unfortunately this year with covid rampant as it is uh that party was canceled I had the opportunity to go to Cleveland because my, my sister, one of my sisters lives there. She invited us over and we debated, but it's like an hour and a half away. We would have to stay till at least midnight. That's kind of the point. Yeah. And then drive back and I'm fucking old and got two young kids. And so we just said to hell with that. So my New Year's Eve consisted of uh, my wife and two children being in bed by 10 30 and me staying awake by myself watching the ghost of dick clark's new year's rock and eve starring ryan secrets did you watch by the my whole damn thing? self i watched the whole fucking thing dude i don't know why i don't know what in the hell possessed me i just felt like this is fucking new year's this is what normally we would have on when we're at a party and you're partying, you know, you're not paying attention to it. But boy, it sucks. Boy, it's not good television. <laughs> I turned... I actually, yeah, I actually paid attention. I actually watched it. And I thought, this is not entertainment. I don't know what the hell you call this. I tuned in about three minutes before the ball dropped. That's when I kind of flipped over there. I was like, all right, yeah. let's watch it drop and sing Happy New Year to myself and my cat. Um, yeah. I will say this. Uh, I think we can clearly see who the sponsor of uh, Rock and New Year's Eve 2020 was. Uh, I don't know it if you was, noticed uh, it. Planet Fitness. Yeah, Planet Fitness was fucking everywhere. Literally, it looked like one big Planet Fitness gym there because they had Planet Fitness hats. They had Planet Fitness everything all over the freaking place. You know, I got to say, that's actually good marketing by Planet Fitness. Oh, it is. It's. Yeah. It was kind of annoying to see it, though. I mean, a lot of people for New Year's make their New Year's resolutions. I don't do that shit. Fuck it. But a lot of people do. And most people say, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get in shape. And that requires them to join a gym. There's always the, you know, after the first of the year bump at the gym. No, it's always busiest for the first couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. I know by... I have my juice head gorilla meathead friends that they go to a gym regularly and they fucking hate this time of year because all these randos just show up, but really they only last for a month or two and then they're gone again. Yeah, pretty but, much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But you, uh, you, my friend, you're a gym guy and you use planet fitness. Am I right? Uh, past tense use planet fitness. I'm not, I'm not going back to planet fitness until the vaccine 
is widespread right. in the country. I'm okay. actually probably this week going to go cancel my membership altogether and then come safer times, I'll probably renew it. I actually have been working out. I've mentioned it before. I was able to get a small set of like dumbbells, like uh, like mm-hmm. some plates and like a couple handles and stuff like that. And I got my workout bench from home over here. So I've actually been working out uh, – Every other day to every day almost. Just doing a little bit like an hour's worth of, you know, whatever. Just trying to get things back into gear. So I haven't really needed Planet Fitness now the past few weeks, to be honest with you. So I will say I was a little annoyed when I was watching the ball drop. Uh, how the ball drop itself was advertised. I uh, I believe it was Kia or something like that. It was some car commercial they had up on the clock as the ball was dropping. And I'm like, can we get like one... It's like a few minutes or like 30 seconds of just something without seeing some type of advertisement going on. Because on the clock, right there with the ball drop, and I've never actually, maybe I'm blind, but I've never actually seen it before where they've actually had a bunch of advertisements underneath the ball as it was dropping. It was kind of annoying. You sound like Charlie Brown's Christmas. Yeah. Everything's too, everything's too fucking commercial for you. I just well, want to see the break it to you, bud. Welcome to capitalism. I just want to see the glowy ball drop. I don't need to see Kia's SUV, latest SUV model up there with a camera doing a spin shot on it. Like, no. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, I, I, New Year's Eve was very uneventful. I had some drinks by myself watching the watching the ball drop all alone. But I will say I had a relatively fun next day. On New Year's Day, oh yeah, I uh, I went over to my uh, brother and sister in law's, uh, Kristen's sister's house and her husband, and they have they have kids, and you know we were having a great time. We were watching some college football bowl games, and and we started drinking. I was drinking some some really good like twelve year Scotch on the rocks, and then I cracked open one of my Christmas presents. Uh, Nice bottle of Buffalo Trace bourbon. Ooh, oh, nice. so good. I was drinking that on the rocks. And then we broke into the, uh, which you and I both had, uh, Dominican rum that I had recently purchased. Uh, this It's like a spiced dark rum from the Dominican Republic. I was having some rum and Cokes. And I was feeling pretty good. You were mixing and it then, up. Oh, dude, I was drinking scotch, bourbon, rum. Everything was fine. Then we started playing like monikers, like a the charade charade style of games, and we're having a good time. Well, my nephew, my oldest nephew, he's a sophomore junior around that in college. He's twenty one. And he decides he's gonna go to his own stash and he busts out a bottle of Jaegermeister. Oh. Yeah. So I started doing shots of Jaeger. <laughs> With my with my brother with my brother in law, yeah, my my brother in law who's in his forties, we'll just say, a couple of, several years older than me, then my nephew who's twenty one, and then me, like we're all spread out relatively in age. We're doing shots of Jaeger. We're throwing it back, dude. I got hammered. I am. I can't imagine why, Scott. I do, I, don't I know got. How. I got hammered, but my brother in law. I think he was he was probably puking his guts out that night. He was in bad shape. He passed out on a chair. We're play, like I said, we were playing monikers, and he fell on the ground trying to do like the third round where it's like kind of like charades. He fell. He bit it hard, and he was just down. <laughs> like there was no getting him up. My nephew, he he did like three more shots than the both of us. Because he's so young and in his prime and he can handle his liquor. Man, I, I got drunk under the table by that young buck, let me tell you. It's it's been a couple years since I've done shots in general. I don't tend to do yeah. shots at all. So it's been a Woo. while for me. Woo. So yeah, I'm still I'm recovered now, but boy, oh boy, was I feeling it. Did you have when you did shots, did you have a chaser? Uh, yeah, I was still drinking my, uh, rum and Cokes at that point. Do you remember the last... I started out with scotch, then I, then I moved to bourbon, and then I went to the rum and Cokes, and I started doing the shots with the rum and Cokes. So, boy, oh boy, it hit me. Do you remember the last time you could do a shot without a chaser? Like, you just took it to the head, and you're like, fuck it, let's go? 
So I have a problem. I'm not very good at doing shots. I'm not very good at chugging beers. I'm not very good at uh, shotgunning or beer bonging. I'm just not good at that. I never have been. I can drink in my prime. I can drink a lot. But I have a problem. Even when I drink like water or anything non-alcoholic, I have a bad habit of like holding it in my mouth before I swallow it. Does that make sense? Um, nice choice of words there, Scott. I'm not going to make the obvious joke, but yes, it makes sense very much. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> walk right into that one. Yeah, and like, it, my dentist has told me like, don't do that. It's bad for your teeth, especially when I'm drinking like something sugary like and you hold it in your mouth pop. like that. Right, something like that. It's bad. It's bad for your teeth. It's bad. I just I fucking do it. So if I'm drinking like a fucking terrible hard fire in your mouth mixed drink or a shot or something i hold up my mouth and it tastes disgusting you just gotta like throw your head back and take it down the hatch yeah and i'm bad at that so so i've never really been one to ever take a shot without a chaser because i suck i remember you used, i used to i could probably still do it now but it didn't feel good but i remember you used to be able to just do that just taking shots left and right no big deal no chaser like, cause it we I grew up in the with a bunch of people that were like, oh, you you don't don't take the chaser, you're gonna be a pansy about it, you know, just take it to the head, like you don't be a pansy about it, like do shit. I was like, all right, fuck yeah, let's do it, and I, we would just do that all the time, and it was great at the time. It's not now; it would kill me now. Good lord, <laughs> I'm gonna be 32 in less than a month, Scott. I'm yeah, get, I'm getting up there. I can't do that shit anymore. Good lord. Yeah, but also, <laughs> also, I was thinking about this. It also depends on what you're taking a shot of. Because there's some of those fucking girly shots that I think actually taste good. Like a green no, tea I, I shot or a lemon drop or, you know, one of those things. Like, they fucking, I could do those without a chaser, no problem. I'm gonna, but if I'm you're gonna... doing like a shot of fucking Jack Daniels, <laughs> something that tastes like fire, yeah, no way. No fucking way. I'm going to say those shots don't count, really. Because okay. those shots are almost like mixed drinks put in a little shot glass. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So if it's not like hardcore tequila or bourbon or whiskey or rum or anything like that, then I'm going to say it doesn't count. You, you got to be a man about it. You got to you gotta get that shit that puts a hair on your chest. Like how they used to say. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I got drunk with the family on New Year's Day and it was it was a blast in a glass. I didn't do anything on New Year's Day. I slept in. <laughs> I woke up late, and then I just started, uh, did a little workout, and then drank a little later. So, yeah, yeah, I, I slept in too. The ne- I slept in on Jan second till like two o'clock. Nice. <laughs> it was That's bad. It was bad. Yeah. Not, I wonder why, Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 2020 gave us one final gift. One. Oh, yeah final gift before it left and this Mm -hmm. one's actually a good gift i think it made the entire world laugh whenever 2020 gave its final gift in the uh in the uh in the works of a video scott a very well-known video i think you know what i'm talking about i'm excited to talk about this i'm super pumped scott i'm talking about the twisted t video oh i want to talk about about that uh that scrawny, meth-addicted white boy who got his head bashed in oh, by the bigger dude my with God. the twisted teeth. It was amazing. L- let me tell you like how I figured out about this video. And this is how disconnected I am from like social media and everything else. I was flipping around through TikTok. Mm-hmm. And then I came across this video at random. And it was an edited down video. Like the part that I saw first was a part when he's talking shit. And he he never used the N-word at this point. He's just talking mm-hmm. shit. And the dude grabs like the twist of tea. He's like, oh, you're going to hit me with the T? And he drops it. And the video ended right after he smacked it. Smack me. Yeah. So that's what I saw. So that's <laughs> all I've seen so far. And then I, <laughs> the next day, I hit up Facebook. I'm like, I haven't been on in a while. I'm going to hit it up. I go on Facebook. And I see... You have this meme picture 
his meme up, um, which I think is the football one. It had to do with like the Cleveland Browns or the Steelers or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I co- I remember commenting on it, and I was like, dude, did you see how hard he hit this motherfucker with that twist of tea? It's like, did you see the video? And then I, I commented on there, and I started scrolling down. I'm like, oh, everybody's seen the fucking video. And so I deleted the comment because I was like, I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed because – I'm disconnected, but everybody saw, and that's how I saw like the full video. It's the greatest video of 2020, hands down. And I love, Ugh. I love the Mandalorian with lyrics video that you sent me. Uh-huh, I love that uh-huh. video. This may be the best. Uh-huh. It's this. If you haven't, I'm not even gonna say if you haven't seen it. You had to have seen it. I don't even care. Everybody who's listening must have seen this video. This white kid gets fucked up, and I could not have been happier. I could not have been laughing harder. There's not anybody in this world that deserves it more at that moment than this kid. Because he's sitting there clearly drunk. He could be high, but he's clearly fucking drunk. And he's calling this dude, this black dude that's behind him in the line of the convenience store. He's fucking, I don't know how it started. I don't know how, uh, there's no full video of that. They might not have been recording at the time. But all you hear is this dude calling this dude the N-word and basically like... they cussing him out, saying like, "You don't live where here." You like, from? yeah, where are you from? You, you're not where from you here. He's from? like, "I'm from here, you're motherfucker." From here? You a clown? He's he's the video starts with this dude talking about his mother, like my mother gonna fuck your mother up or my mother gonna fuck, fuck your mom. Mama. Fuck yo mama. Yeah, it's the greatest thing, and he's talking so much. Like he's like. His mannerisms, like he's just like he's skinny as fuck. So imagine like a worm or a snake just like slithering or like standing up on. Like imagine you know those like Indian stereotypes where they play the little flute and the snake comes up out of the fucking uh, basket and they're just like wiggling around. Imagine that this dude's like going back and forth on this dude. He's a fucking, he's being <coughs> snake charmed. <laughs> This dude is going back and forth. He's getting in his face, getting out of his face. I didn't. I noticed the first. The dude who, uh, who I don't know his name. Thank you, whoever you are, for doing this. He sets down his bag, which had like two big ass big gulps in it, or some shit like that. Yeah. And he had a twisted tea, and he grabs a twisted tea, and he's like holding his hand. It was he's a like, can. It was like a pounder. Yeah, it, it was, was like, like a sixteen ounce tall can. Like imagine, like um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, imagine a can of monster. Like a big tall ass can of monster, basically. He grabs it and he's like, you he's like getting all pissed up. He's like holding his hand, he's like he's like flipping it and shit like that. He's like, Oh, you gonna hit me? You gonna hit me? Go ahead. And he puts his face up to him and stuff like that. Go ahead and smack me. And he like Oh my god. He flips The dude the dude is holding like two bottles of Bud Light. He's buying Oh two. yeah. He sets them down on the counter. Maskless, mind in. you, by the way, you didn't say this, maskless. He's the maskless. only person without a fucking mask. So we know who he probably voted for. <clears throat> yeah, with with force. Like, he was, like, grinding his teeth as he said this. Yeah. He goes, he goes, smack me with it. <laughs> <laughs> this kid. He, fucking, he literally asked for it. <laughs> he literally said, do it. It's evidence film evidence of oh, he told shit. him to hit him with that fucking can and you know he thought this dude's not gonna do anything this dude's not gonna do it he had that kind of like drunk attitude about it he's like this mm-hmm. dude's not gonna fucking do anything and he he flips the can one time and he drops the can and he goes down to pick it up he picks it up the kid takes his foot and tries to kick the can but kicks the fucking racket from him as he's yeah. coming up with the can Bam! Knocks this motherfucker back to 2020. This dude has to relive 2020. That's how hard he hit this motherfucker. Oh my god, it's the most satisfying fucking thing I've ever seen because he hits him hard enough that it busts open the can and there's like a, and everybody in the store, the cash register behind the thing, are like, oh shit! And he is so fucking shocked when he, the look in this kid's eyes, this white kid, the look in his eyes, like, did this motherfucker really just do it? And he steps up to him like he's going to do things. But the problem is, he steps up on him, and you can tell this kid has never been in a real fucking fight before in his life. Because he does the thing where he's like, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to put my hands up and just kind of push on your face and try, try to like push you down and stuff like that. If this dude did not flip this motherfucker down on the ground and start knocking him in the head, it's like, just call me, call me over one more time, call me it again one more time. <laughs> this kid, oh my god, it's the greatest video, dude. I got, I gotta say, I love your enthusiasm. I love your breakdown of this, 
what 30 40 second video on the internet it's like a like minute your and a half it's like, like a minute and a half <laughs> is it real okay okay you like john madden the shit out of this clip like you broke it down to x's and o's i love it you did you did a great job like you said when you started talking about it most people in the entire world have seen this video but if you're somebody listening for some reason you haven't seen this video adam it just explained it to a t it ends with this dude punching this kid in the head, and the kid realizes he fucked up. He realizes he fucked up hard. He's like, chill, chill, man, chill, chill. All right, all right, chill, chill. He's like, what the fuck you mean, chill? You, uh, go back and rewatch the video, apparently, because you don't know why you're getting your fucking head beat in at the bottom of me at the floor of a comedian store. And even the comedian store was like, all right, all right, he got what he deserved. He got what he deserved. Let him up, let him up. He's like, you're going to be good? You're going to be cool? You're going to be cool? He's like, yeah, yeah, chill, man, chill. He He doesn't let him up. He picks this dude up and shows Escorts him to the him fucking outside. door yeah. and shoves him on the ground. Doesn't even let him stand up. He shows him on the ground and makes this dude crawl out of the fucking store. Oh my god, it's so amazing. Yeah, yeah, you you explained it to a T. Get it? To a T. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking a drink there. You almost let me just spit it out. Okay, well, speaking <laughs> of T, like... I want to go buy Twisted Tea now. Twisted Tea like, had nothing to do with this video at all, and I want to support the company. Yeah, right? Yeah. I guarantee Twisted Tea's sca- sales have skyrocketed <laughs> after this video. It's amazing. Like, this dude, I'm so happy. I'm really happy that the white kid didn't have crackhead strength and take him down. I'm really happy right. about that because that would have made the video worse. But it's so amazing just seeing this dude smack him in the head with a can and then take him down right afterwards. I was like, amazing. Fucking amazing. There's even there's even narration going on a little bit in the background. Like whoever's in behind the camera and shit like that. The second that he smacks him with the can and he throws him on the ground, there's this um there's this one in the background like, oh, you fucked up now, boy. You fucked up now and shit like that. Like it's amazing. It's the greatest video of 2020. I'm going to say thank you, 2020, for fucking giving me that video. It's people like that that have come like out and I'm not going to like bring this into politics, but it's like people like that over the past four years that we've seen like come out and we've seen like say, I, you know what? If black people can say the N word, I can say the N word too. This video just proved, no, you cannot. No, you fucking cannot because this shit's going to happen now. It's amazing. Uh, I love it. It's my favorite thing of 2020. And, and, and if you, for some reason, haven't seen this video, do yourself a favor. Go go watch the video right now. And even if you have seen it, go watch the video again. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. And I think it, it, it's like a fine wine. It gets better each time you watch it. With age, it, it, oh, it's, it, it's classic. I wish I was good at video editing and I wish I had a green screen in my apartment because I would John Madden the fuck out of that video. 100%. <laughs> like you said, I, I'm doing it like John Madden. I would John Madden the fuck out of the video. All these pauses like, all right, all right, see now, all right, here's where this kid fucked up right here. Here's where he fucked up. And now we can see the arc on his arm. And I would do it in slow motions. Here's the arc on his arm. He comes up. Great form, by the way. Amazing form. Like this kid is, this kid knows what he's doing. And here comes the moment of contact. Boom. And then just constant like replaying it, just that two seconds of him getting smacked in the head. I'm I'm waiting for somebody to do some shit like that. Oh, um, I'm just dying. Of, I'm just borderline dying of laughter. I'm gonna watch it. I think I'm gonna watch a video every night before I go to bed. It's just gonna give me nothing but good dreams. Um. Anyway, thank you, 2020, for giving us that video. Love it so much. Moving on. Uh, I finally watched something, Scott. I've watched something that you have been, I believe, dying for me to watch. It's one of those TV shows that I've kind of put off a little bit. And I finally sat down and watched some of it. I watched the first season of His Dark Materials last night. All right. And when I say last night, I mean I started it and I finished season one yesterday. That's that's kind of how I ran things. I didn't plan on doing it, but I did it because it's pretty damn good fucking show not gonna lie it's got it's got me going now it's it's, yeah i i like it it showed me also and i actually text this to you i think i'm really liking lin-manuel miranda as an actor and it's not like i've 
because I've never I've seen him do nothing but bad stuff or anything like that. It's because like the only real thing I've seen him do is Hamilton so far, and he was good in Hamilton. But you need more than just like one thing to really gauge somebody's acting ability. And I don't think I've ever really I might have seen him do like a cameo role in like one episode of a show a long time ago, but I can't remember it. Um, but, have you ever seen Mary Poppins too? Yeah, is he in it? Yeah, he's awesome in it. I didn't know that. I, I'll be honest with you; I didn't really pay too much attention to that movie. It's not good. So yes, it is. It's not a, even my even my younger cousin who liked Mary Poppins one didn't want to want finish it. We made it like she after an hour she's like, "I, I can we like watch something else?" I'm like, "No, we're finishing it now." So. Um, Ugh, uncultured swine. But he and is it, really great in the show. He's he's honestly one of my favorite characters. Like when he showed up on screen, he's got such charm. He's like the swashbuckling, I guess you would say Han Solo type character in this in this kind of series. Except he might has like at, from the start of it more of like a heart and more like a willingness to help compared to Han Solo. But he's just like a cowboy, like a steampunk style kind of cowboy. One thing I love about the show, I'm a big fan of like weird airships. And this show definitely has like weird, unique airships. I've always I love stuff like that. It just it just kind of gets me. Weird airships, yeah, you do have a thing for that. Giant robots and airships. You're you're like you're like a closet Japanese guy. A little bit. I think I'm turning <laughs> Japanese, Scott. I really think so. Um, so I, I really like season one of his Dark Materials, <laughs> but I got to be honest, I love season two. I think even more. Really? Um, yes. And I, these are books. These are very popular books. I never read them, which <laughs> I think is so. I think that's good. I think that's something good because I didn't really know too much about this universe, other than that terrible early two thousands movie that was done the golden called the, compass the golden compass that we had nicole kidman and daniel craig uh yeah that that movie sucked so bad that movie was season one they they take place around the same th that was like the first book basically was i i can't remember because it's been so long since i've seen the movie i don't really beyond the golden compass itself and like a bear that fights with them. I don't really remember much from that movie. Was Lord Azrael such a dick in that movie as he was in this season? Yes. I, um, I can't remember if they changed that or not. Cause he was a fucking asshole well, in this. Well, in, this show. in the movie, in the golden compass movie, Daniel Craig played Lord Azrael in the show. James McAvoy plays him. Yeah. I love James McAvoy. I love James McAvoy too. But his character in this show sucks. And I'm not holding that against him. He's doing a good job of an actor playing somebody who sucks. Yeah, not like his he, he, character sucks. Like, sucks and like he's a bad guy, basically. He's kind of a bad guy. A little bit. Um, I, I, would, I would say so, yes. Like, Lyra, the main character, it seems like her family entirely sucks. Because her mom is very, like, she needs to like, be on, like antidepressants and like other types of she needs to be like in a mm -hmm. mental asylum because she's like I thought it was really interesting she's kind of the way that I read it her story she's kind of blaming she's very much like suicidal depression sort of she's maybe a little bipolar who are, who are you talking about who's the, suicidal the Lyra Lyra's mom Miss Coulter okay Mrs. Coulter yeah who Ruth Wilson plays her I yeah. like Ruth Wilson too she does a really nice job Nicole Kidman played this character in the movie and I think Ruth Wilson does a better job and i'm a big nicole kidman fan don't get me wrong yeah so uh yeah yeah she's all she's bipolar definitely all over the place yeah because there's there's like a scene where she almost jumps off the top of it she talks about in the beginning of the like episode two or whatever how mm -hmm. like she's thought about jumping off the building and stuff like that kind of like and shit like that and she almost mm -hmm. does it when she's drunk like in the middle of the season and she's like blaming it's. Re I think it's a really interesting, interesting story that they're basically blaming dust that comes to adults, right? When they, when they hit puberty and their date, their demon takes its final form. They're blaming the connection with the demon on the fact that they're fucked up and they have all these negative thoughts and everything like that. Not not that they're just fucking mentally like fucked up. 
So I think, right. I think it's an interesting story. I will say one of the one of my favorite scenes was the scene where um, they're at the they're in the north and they're at, at the that facility. And Lyra makes mm-hmm. her escape from Miss Coulter, and she like slams the door on her and locks her in the room. And they have that scene where they're both screaming at the door, and it's just going back and forth between them. And you can like feel the anger and like the hatred and like the the rage that they have each other. But it's like mother and daughter; they're like kind of the same person when they're like in that moment. And it's a pretty cool thing. I, I'm, I think whoever did like who's doing like the writing and the direction and stuff like that is pretty good. I'm gonna say this though. And I text this to you, and you didn't text me back. Uh, Roger might be the dumbest fucking character to ever exist in any TV show. He might well, be stupid, and I get it. He's a kid. I get it, and I understand that. But he's fucking dumb because at the end, when they find uh, Lyra's father, James McAvoy's character, uh-huh. and they spend the night there at the laboratory, like his whole plan is to basically use the. He explains it a little bit that whenever you disconnect a child from their demon, it like releases energy. And his whole plan is to release the energy to open up a doorway to another world and shit like that. He's gonna he tricked Roger by saying, like, oh, don't worry, like we're gonna go up on the mountain. Lyra will join us later. Like, come on, we're gonna go. After all the shit this kid has been through, why would he ever fucking try? Especially because he was suspicious of him when he walked in the door saying, like, I don't know, because he was real James McAvoy's character is really happy to see Roger because now he had a test subject to use to split the animal, the demon from the human and create this uh-huh. energy. And he's just gonna go with him? Like like nothing's happened? And the crazy thing about that scene is uh, Lyra is actually Lord Azrael's daughter, but he didn't want her to know that for the longest time. So when she showed up at the door first, do you remember how distraught he was? Oh, he was angry. He was so... Why are you here? Because he was still going to fucking use her. Yeah. He was going and he didn't want to. And then when he saw Roger was with her, he just got so elated, like, Oh, thank God I don't have to use my daughter as a test subject. Now I can use this rando kid friend of hers. It was really creepy, the, and I love James McAvoy for this. It was really creepy the way he flipped the switch, and he was basically, like, mm-hmm. freaking out, like, almost spit coming out of his mouth, like, freaking, like, red-faced, like, why are you here? Blah. And he sees Roger, and all of a sudden he gets really happy. He's like, Roger, I'm so happy you're here. You're the exact person that I wanted to see. And I'm like, oh, fucking shit. Yeah, yeah, and I had to look up her name. I didn't know her name. Daphne Keen is the uh, is the girl who played Lyra. Yeah, and she's great. She's so good in this series. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, she, she also played X twenty three in Logan. Yeah, she did. Which is a great fucking movie. It's, and she uh, was great in that too. She was amazing. Yeah, yeah. She she's awesome. That comes full circle because. She's in an X Men movie, and so is James McAvoy in X Men movies, and I just I just thought that was fun. Okay, anyway, I was happy to see um, the guy that plays uh, Colonel Perry, the father of the kid in the real world in our world, um, with the who was married to the mentally challenged uh, mother who has like mental problems. Okay, and shit. the actor that played him is named Andrew Scott, and he played Moriarty in the Sherlock series with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and I loved him. In that series, okay. he played he played Moriarty. Not like we've seen classic renditions of Moriarty, like with the um, um, Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies, and he's like a sophisticated savant genius professor. In the Sherlock series, he played him as almost like an insane, just broken down person who just like has talks to himself all the time and you know he but he's like a genius and everything like that and he played him so well and i was really happy to see him I, i'm hoping uh no spoilers but i'm hoping to see him further like actually in the show not just like on video that would be cool because he's a really great actor um you'll have to wait because i know the answer to that yeah i know i'm gonna i might start watching season two tomorrow um that might be what i do uh, but it's a great sh- it's a great show so far. Like I said, um, so so here's something else I, I wanted to point out before we shift gears here. You said you loved how Lin Manuel Miranda was playing uh, uh, Lee. Lee Scoresby. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, the aeronaut. Yes, he uh, which he did a great job. If you remember back to the Golden <coughs> Compass movie, it was Sam Elliott, who I love Sam Elliott too. 
He played him. I think, in my humble opinion, Sam Elliott probably fits that character a little bit better than Lin-Manuel Miranda because uh, Lee Scoresby is in – in this universe, for those people who don't know, it's different universes. It's and more like a, a steampunky kind of universe almost, just a little bit. Just a tad. A bit. little bit. There's elements of it. Yes. yes. But 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 you can there, there's ways to travel from to these different universes. <laughs> and our universe exists in there somewhere. But in this universe, uh, Texas never became part of the United States. Texas is its own independent nation. And he says that a couple times. My name's Lee Scoresby. I'm from the country of Texas. I he, didn't he catch that. I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, it's actually kind of a fun little fact. But he, he speaks with, like, a southern accent. Yeah. You get that. Uh, but but Lin-Manuel Miranda is from New York. Like, he doesn't... But Sam Elliott is fucking Texas to a T. We're going to talk a little bit about Sam Elliott later on. We're going to talk about him a little later. Um, during oh, we Co- are? Okay. During Coaster Cinema. So Awesome. I'm um, excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, but you're, you're right. I mean, when you, t- when you say, like, Sam Elliott plays it real better, let's be honest. Sam Elliott can play just about any fucking role he wants. He's, he's pretty great. He is really awesome. Um, mm-hmm. One of my favorite characters, and I didn't see this coming, was the witch that was a, that was uh, used to be married or was in a relationship with the one guy. I can't remember his name. Uh-huh. Like she, she became like a real badass character to me because when they stormed the fucking facility in the north and they Serafina. were trying to re- Serafina. Serafina. Yeah, Serafina. When she stormed the when they stormed the facility to try to take back the kids, and. They're in that like open courtyard little area, and they're fighting them off. And the doctor's like, "Like, oh, just grab her, just kill the rest, and stuff like that." She comes out of fucking nowhere in the sky and just decimates all these fucking soldiers in here. It was, I was so, I was like, "Oh shit, there she goes, fucking stabbing everybody in like five seconds yeah. flat." I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing." Uh, I wish I don't know the actress's name. Who played Serafina I think in his dark materials? Up. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, uh, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. Ru- which Serafina, Ruta Jed, Jed, Jedmitas, Jedmitas. I don't know. I don't know who she is, but she does a fantastic job. Serafina needs to be super mega attractive, <clears throat> and I keep reverting back to the Golden Compass movie because that's the only thing that I had to base this off. So yeah. I read the books. It was Eva Green in. The Golden Compass movie Ooh. before Eva Green was like we. I love her. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, mean, I, I. I don't know. I, I feel like I should read the books. I feel like I want to read the books. I. I well, think these are books I would have to listen to the audiobooks for these if I was to do. I'd have to listen to the audiobooks for me. Well, um, here's the thing. Like back when Harry Potter was doing so well and. Chronicles of Narnia and Hunger Games and and all that other fucking like movie books that were turned into movies. Somebody jumped on board with turning the His Dark Materials into into movies. Yeah, and they did the first book, which was the Golden Compass movie, so bad. That movie's so bad, and it's got like we said, it's a great story with an amazing cast. And it's just done horribly. And I don't think with the detail that we've seen in this, the TV series, I don't think you could do a movie. There's so many details. You, it would have to be the longest movie ever. I was actually thinking about this when I was watching the show. I was thinking about how HBO has... Say what you want about the last season of Game of Thrones. Say what you want about that. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed in it, but it is what it is. HBO has a knack it seems, for taking book series and turning them into great TV shows. Like, it's like okay. you said, you can't take these... It's it's like I've been saying for years, the problem the why we don't have a good video game movie is because you, you can't take that format and turn it into a successful movie. You need to take time with it. You need to, you know, like a TV show. You gotta you do it in a TV show. And we've, we're seeing that with The Witcher right now on Netflix. Season 1 mm-hmm. of The Witcher, based on a video game, it's a TV series, and it's fucking great. Everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. I I like The Witcher a lot. I'm excited for season two. Me too. So this series, being that it's a book and it's a book series and has so many different elements, so many different stories, so many different characters, it does itself just as being told by a or through a TV show. I think the only, I'm not gonna say the only. I think 
the most well-known, the two most well-known franchises that were successful movies from books have to be Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Yes, yeah, I would say so. I would think it'd be cool to see Lord of the Rings done as a TV show and spend more time in that world and universe and kind of see things and flesh out, maybe make it a little more... Because they change, Peter Jackson changed a lot of things um, from the book for the movie that you kind of don't like get to know. Like, for example, the beginning, if you remember Gandalf, um, when he gives Frodo the ring and he takes off to go do research, there's like 10 years or some shit like that. There's like years in between that time in the book series. But it doesn't seem like that. It seems like there's only like a couple weeks or whatever that goes by. Yeah. So I would yeah. love to see something like that. But I love Lord of the Rings. I kind of don't want them to touch that again. But it, this does it justice. This is doing it really well, I think. And I'm really enjoying well, it a lot. Well, they, they made money. That's the difference. The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, like, there's six movies. And each movie was like three fucking hours long. So... When you do it like that, okay, you might be able to tell the majority of the story. Uh, same thing with Harry Potter. There's, what, ten fucking Harry Potter movies? Something stupid like that. I don't know. It's and, a lot. And, and, yeah, yeah. like like, And there's going to be more. There's going to be fucking more. And it's just bonkers. And and they get a, you get a lot of the story told in that many iterations of it. But the Golden Compass didn't do that. And it, it was unfortunate. Because now that we're seeing his dark materials, and you'll love it even more in season two. I can't wait for you to watch season two. It is exciting. It's it's a whole new universe. It, it, it harkens back. I, I, it reminds me of like a Chronicles of Narnia or a Hunger Games. Yeah. This universe that it invents. That it's just fun. It's fun. I like it. Uh, I did want to ask you one question, then we can move on to something else. Um, sure. Does the Western king have any real influence or power or authority besides over the Egyptians? Because he keeps calling himself like, I'm the king of the West, I'm the, the Western king, king of the Egyptians and stuff like that. But is he is beyond like being a leader of like a simple group, does he have any like recognized authority that the Magisterium kind of is like, all right, we reckon we... Because obviously the Magisterium doesn't like the Egyptians. They're more willing to exert their authority over them. But does he have any like authority himself in this world over everything else uh, i i would say no not not <clears throat> extremely but they don't care about that it's almost like I, i'll harken back to game of thrones here it's almost like the king in the north i see okay like the gypsies <clears throat> don't the Egyptians don't give a shit about anybody else but the Egyptians. yeah they're... but that's okay that's okay. And you've got you've got a, le a leader of the ice bears. You've got a leader of the witches. You've got a leader of the Egyptians. You, they all have their own individual leader. But the magisterium, they're the ones who control. They're the ones who have the real power. Yeah. I, I will say this. I was hoping at the, the last episode when Yorick um, gathered the bears and they were mm -hmm. fighting off the magisterium and stuff like that. I was hoping for a much larger epic battle to like see. I was kind of open for that because the bears weren't just like what was really cool about it was the bears weren't just like fucking bears running around biting shit. They had like fucking cannons and siege weapons and shit like that they were shooting off and everything. Like it was really cool. So I was kind just of open you to wait. see more of that. Just okay. you wait. So I'm glad you watched uh, his dark materials or anything else you watching right now. Um, not really. I want to get into um. What's it called on HBO too? The um, Jordan Peele TV show, <clears throat> Lovecraft Country. I want to get into that. Yes, Lovecraft because that looked really good. Um, I just needed something more fantasy driven because okay. I have I have a funny feeling Jordan Peele when he does movies he does amazing movies he does amazing TV shows, but I have a feeling that it's going to run this kind of the same format where it's going to be socially distraught and it's going to be a lot of like racially different and racially biased things and things like that and it's going to be talking about i have a feeling it's going to be a lot of like african-american black discontent kind of thing like backstory yeah. to it and i see a lot of that in my everyday when we watch the news so i needed something a little more fantasy driven to like yeah, escape that I, I world before i jump into lovecraft lovecraft country i i watched all of the first season of lovecraft country uh, from what I understand, there is going to be a second season, which isn't out yet. That's good. I very, very much enjoyed 
Lovecraft Country. I like it. I think you will like it. But I think if I'm comparing his dark <laughs> materials to Lovecraft Country, I think I liked his dark materials more because of the fantasy element. Because I enjoy that. I like that sort of a thing. Whereas, and I mean, don't get me wrong, there's more of a supernatural element to Lovecraft Country. I hate to say it's more real because it's absolutely not. But yeah. but there are some underlying depressing tones <laughs> that are real. Unfortunately, all too real. That kind of makes you sad. I just... Whereas, Whereas the more fantasy element in his dark materials isn't quite as upsetting. I just have one question about Lovecraft Country. Okay. The Cthulhu-esque elements that were mm-hmm. teased in the trailers in it, is it yes. like actually Cthulhu-esque stuff or is that like, oh, like dreams and drugs and like you just, like delusions and stuff like that? Or is it like really like Cthulhu shit happening? Uh, yes to both of those. Okay, because that, that's what I've been looking for. Every single time I've ever like seen any Cthulhu type stuff, mm-hmm. it's always been like mass behind like delusions and like fantasies well, and like drugs and actually, dreams that's and shit. Kind of, that's actually a big part of what Lovecraft's writings were. So that that does play a large role, all of that in the show. But I will promise you there are monsters. As I say, I just want to see some monsters, some real monsters. There's, that's what I want to see. There's there's monsters. Okay. That's all I want to know. Okay. Uh, so I've been watching a couple things, switching gears, definitely. Uh, so I started watching, and I'm not too sure about it yet. I started watching The Stand on CBS oh. All Access. Is it any good? Because I was interested um, in it. It's an interesting it's story, so... Yeah, it, it's, just, it's, it's arguably one of my favorite Stephen King stories. I remember the... Uh, made for tv miniseries from back in the 90s that i as a kid i fucking loved it i loved it now it doesn't really hold up i've i've since rewatched it in my adult age and it's it's poorly done you could tell that it was a made for tv movie but it's like when you go back and you watch the original it yeah. That was also that was also a made for TV miniseries. It's 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 also not a good movie. The only good it, no. part, the only good parts about it are Tim Curry as Pennywise. Beyond that, everything else sucks. Right, right. And that's kind of how the original stand was. I remember thinking to myself, "Holy shit, how did I love this so much as a kid? I guess I was ignorant, didn't know any better." So, it, it what they're doing is a very very much needed update to it. That's and good. And, and, and it is, it is the my biggest problem. If you don't, you do. If you're not familiar with the story of the stand, it revolves around a killer plague that kills the majority of the world. And under these current times, <laughs> I feel like Ugh, maybe yeah. this should have been. Maybe this should have been released like earlier than this, or, or maybe they should have waited. Wait till we get the vaccine, and then after we get the vaccine, then that summer release it. Right, so. right. I- I've only watched a couple episodes of it. Uh, it. It's classic Stephen King style. It's fucking long, and it's detailed, and sometimes they just care so much about something that's so meaningless. You know, you've seen the size of Stephen King's books, right? Oh, yeah. I tried to read one of them one time, and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a little bit neurotic. A genius. Genius. But neurotic with his writing. Very long-winded. Ve- yes. And you see a little bit of that in his movies, too. Uh, big fan. Big fan. And I, I like the show so far. I don't love the show, but I like it. So I'm going to keep going, and I'll, I'll report back to let you know what okay. else I think. The other thing I'm watching, and this is what I needed. I needed a comedy, and I needed lighthearted, and I needed something to make you laugh out loud funny. So I started watching the show called Ted Lasso. It's on Apple TV, and it's starring Jason Sudeikis. I've, never, I've not heard of this. Okay, so he is an American from Kansas, and he is a football coach. And 
he gets hired by a soccer club in England to come coach. But he knows nothing about the sport. And it's hilarious. It is very, very funny. And I enjoy it. It, I recommend. I don't know if you have Apple TV. Um, um, what do you think, Scott? I, I I think that's a resounding no. Yeah. But but uh, but we got like one of the free trials for it, and I was like, I'll try this show, and I very much enjoy it. So <laughs> I like Jason so Sudeikis watching... a lot. So oh oh yeah, he's great. He's great. So the two shows I'm watching right now are The Stand and Ted Lasso, and uh, they're both pretty good. All right, we're going to hopefully update you later on on when we continue this. Yep. I'm hopefully going to, before um, the next regular episode, I'm hopefully going to have um, updated on His Dark Materials. We can uh, talk about Season 2, hopefully. Sure. That's what okay. I'm working on. Um, but anyway, I think it is time, Scott, that we get into... Oh. Unless you have something else you want to talk about? you have anything Ta- else you've been watching? Oh, no, time, time for what, Adam? I'm it's time to... for the first course of cinema of 2021 the very awesome. first one that we are doing to remind the listeners of what movies we picked each other to watch for course of cinema i chose for scott to watch the movie dolomite is my name on netflix dolomite. starring eddie murphy and you chose for me to watch the man who killed hitler and then bigfoot starring Sam Elliott. I told you we were going to talk yeah. about him later. I told you we were going to do there it. There he is. There he is. Um, I went first last time, so why don't you go first this time and tell me what you thought of Dolomite is my name. Dolomite is my name. Spoilers, I really uh, like this movie a lot. I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I remember... I don't know if I watched the whole thing, but I remember seeing scenes... From the movie Dolomite, the action, like the for yeah. real movie, like <laughs> so. This movie is about making the movie Dolomite and how it came to be. Dolomite is a real movie from the seventies that that became a cult classic, if you will. Uh, it would it would I be feel- compared to like your classic B movie that nobody likes now, but in like ten years people start to love it kind of kind of thing yeah yeah and uh eddie murphy plays the guy he plays dolomite and he's just like a stand-up comedian who uh needs to find his thing he's struggling he's can't he can't really break it big and then so he creates this character and let's face it you and i have talked about this so many times on here that's what comedy is that's what entertainment is. That's what performing is. You you are playing a character. Yeah. And he just does it to the extreme, if you will. He creates a persona and performs on stage as this person and makes records as this person and makes ultimately makes a movie as this persona. I would arm, almost argue he stole this persona. Because yeah, he yeah. he basically talked to a bunch of homeless people and a bunch of other like poor people and stuff like that who like were living in the black community and they have this this attitude that he develops for Dolomite and all these jokes and he basically takes their stories and recreates them as this one character Dolomite. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um and it's funny because I would like to say last week for Chorus of Cinema I made you watch the movie CB4 starring Chris Rock. Yeah. I and Chris Rock is actually in this movie too. He's a smaller role, but he's still in it. I would like to think that the original movie Dolomite kind of inspired CB4. Could have. Because be, I really do. I think it was the inspiration because they're stealing a persona off of someone else. They're playing characters. That's exactly what what happened with with this. But as far as this movie, I love Eddie Murphy, man. And you know me. I am very critical with comedians, especially when it comes to stand-up comedy. But Eddie Murphy is one of the few that I love. Uh, Raw, have you, you know, Raw, of course. Yeah, of course. Seen a million times. 
it is iconic. I feel like that is one of my favorite stand-ups. It cannot be touched. And I love Eddie Murphy, just about everything he does. <laughs> and he does it again. He does it again. This movie was very good. Very funny. Uh, <laughs> great cast. Great cast. Oh, yeah. um, like I said, like I said, the opening. I want to go back and watch the original Dolomite now. I think I will appreciate that so much more after watching Dolomite is my name. It's it's great. The movie's great in that it like you were saying, like he he a down and out at, like stand up comedian just trying to find his like trying to find his itch. He's trying mm-hmm. to find his itch to scratch. He's trying to find his his breakout like role. And he's able to it's almost like a borderline like Kevin Smith's story because he's able to just instead of like waiting for somebody to give him his role, he takes advantage of it and he does it himself. He takes his own money, he takes money, borrows money, mm-hmm. and he does this movie himself, essentially. Right. Like he's he rents out like a, a a building so that they can use. They rents out all this other stuff. His equipment. He puts his own life, basically his own livelihood on the line to do it and it's it's amazing like it's it's a, almost an inspirational story in and of itself this this person who played dolomite and i loved i love the end of the movie the credits when they I, I if i remember correctly they showed like scenes from the actual dolomite movie and things like that so you could see what it looked like and i was like this is this is really cool i'm right there with you i, I want to watch uh the original dolomite too because i never saw the original one so yeah uh he he basically gambled on himself yeah, with making this movie and, and and won because the movie, like I said, became a success. Uh, and in the seventies, especially in the black culture, the like kung fu trope and that that was really in. And he took that and made it a comedy, which there really wasn't too many spoofs or satires of the time. Now they're everywhere. Like the market is saturated yeah. with, with satires and spoofs of those kind of that style of comedy. Back then, it really wasn't. Like you're watching this like overweight fat dude who doesn't know karate perform karate, and is not a ladies' man it. in real life, but gets all no. the ladies in the movie. Right, right, and like and like you see like the white people who he's trying to market the film for. They're like, wait, wait, so do you know cry? And he's like, fuck no. <laughs> and they're like, well, well, what's the point? He's like, because it's funny. Like, he had to, like, tell them, like, this is hilarious. Yeah. And it was. The sex scene? Oh, my God. <laughs> and he's, the whole walls are moving, the ceiling comes down. <laughs> the, the ceiling comes down. It's great. Like, that's, that's funny as shit. And that's what they were going for. And people... White people, I should say. White people didn't get it. But the black community did. They're the ones who went to see the movie. That's how he made his money. Yeah. They thought it was hilarious because it was hilarious. It was fucking hilarious as shit. Yeah. Dolomite's my Dolomite. name and fucking up Dolomite motherfuckers my is my <laughs> it's, a, it's a great line. Yeah, man. I'm really happy you it's... enjoyed it. I'm really happy you did. I did. It was funny. It was funny. <clears throat> I liked it. I figured I'd give you something a little funny after last week's uh, depressing movie. So yeah, man, I'm still <laughs> reeling from that one. All right. Um, okay, your turn. Your turn, my friend. Let us have it. So you gave me the man who killed Hitler and then B- Bigfoot, starring Sam Elliott. Um, this first, I want to talk about Sam, Sam Elliott real quick. Sam Elliott is amazing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's anything he can do. That I would not like him in. I I almost watched the ranch because he was in it. Do you remember that Netflix TV show with uh Ashton Kutcher and uh, Danny Matheson? Yeah, yeah. I almost watched it just because Sam Elliott was in it because I I really like him a lot. He is Sam Elliott is the old man I want to grow up to be. If you yeah. have to grow old, this is the guy that you want to be. Hundred percent. Like. Yeah, so Sam Elliott is like a golden, just a golden apple. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on to the movie now, Scott. When you describe this movie to me, 
you left out one important point that I think you need to start including into your description. Because you talk about this movie a lot. You've talked about it with me. You've talked about it with your <laughs> friend group. You're like, oh my god, there's this crazy movie. You know, it's a man who killed Hitler and then killed Bigfoot. It's like this dude who killed Hitler and later on he kills Bigfoot. You do a great job describing this movie. But there's one piece that I think from now on when you describe this movie you need to add to it. And that is this movie is so incredibly depressing. It is a sad, sad fucking movie. It's a great movie. I, I liked yeah. it. I liked it. It's a great movie. But the way you described it to me, and the way you described it for months and months and months when you were talking about this movie, it made me think I was going to be watching like Inglorious Bastards or something like that. Something uh-huh. a little lighthearted. But my God, I don't even ask you. If you want to watch this movie. Before you watch this movie, take a little trapezone, some Prozac, or like just hit the blunt once or twice. Because my God, it's a depressing ass movie. It's basically about this guy who was a veteran from World War II, and he shot and killed Hitler in the secret mission. But nobody knows about it. Obviously, it's secret. You know, nobody knows he's the one that did it. So he's living in this small town, goes, you know, local watering hole, goes to this rundown bar every night and shit like that, just kind of sits around and have some drinks. And it's basically sad, old man, lonely movie. Like, that's what it is. Like, he's lonely mm-hmm. because, you know, he met the love of his life before he went to the war. And it, there's constant flashbacks to, like, a younger, a younger self. It's played by um, Aiden Turner. I, Aiden Turner, who played the younger version of Sam Elliott's character. Did a fantastic job. He was just great. as good, just as good as Sam Elliott. He made me believe Aiden, he was younger Sam Elliott. Yes, like, Aiden Turner was fantastic. <clears throat> he was great, and they, it would constantly go into flashbacks over time. Uh, every now and then, just kind of see his progression through, like joining the military, getting a secret mission. You see him shoot Hitler with like this makeshift gun that is in like three separate pieces they had to put together because he's undercover as like a Nazi as like a Nazi soldier or a Nazi um general or lieutenant or whatever. And an officer. Yeah, officer. He was an officer. Yeah. Um yeah. So occasionally go to the flashbacks for that. He meets the love of his life before he goes to war. He goes to war and the love of his life moves away, like moves back home to like where his mother is and stuff like that, where her mother is and everything like that. The problem is he can never have the moment of coming home and being with her because she dies young from like sickness or they don't really go into too much detail, but she just dies. Young. Right. Right. And he's just sad and he's crying in bed. Like young Sam Elliott is crying in bed. And then it goes to old Sam Elliott and he's borderline crying in his bedroom too. Like it's just him waking up in the morning. He's got like a little lockbox under his bed. And it probably has like letters and shit like that, like memorabilia from her. And he looks at it every morning. And he gets up and he kind of wipe. He takes a shower and he wipes. There's a scene where he wipes like the the fog from the mirror. And it's that moment where you know you're old and you're staring at yourself like, what have I become? What have I become? My life? I'm like, watch this movie. Like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like, I feel bad. I feel depressed now. I'm sad. I was like, when are we going to get some fun stuff? Never. Never do you get some... It's not a... It's it's a great movie. It's not... I was hoping for a fun movie. And it's not a fun movie. It's really not. Even the Bigfoot stuff isn't treated as fun. <laughs> Even that is not treated as fun. They come to him because there's this, there's this disease going around, like a next plague or something like that, but they're keeping it under wraps or, and they're you know claiming it's like a serial killer killing people and shit like that or something going on or whatever. And then the government comes to him, the Canadian and the CIA or some shit like that come to him. Right. And they're like, you are the best tracker that we have. You are immune to this disease because we have blood from back in the war and we tested it. You're one of the few people immune to this disease. You're one of the few people we know who is an expert tracker. We want you to track down and kill Bigfoot. Because he is has this mutated virus that is spreading her and killing all the living creatures and the animals and shit like that in the area. And it's going to infect the world and kill everybody. We want you to kill Bigfoot. And when they mention Bigfoot, there's not even like a smirk or a moment where like they're going to joke around with it where Sam is going to be like, get out of town. Like he looks at him all mm-hmm. serious and is like, so you want me to track down Bigfoot? I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> And there's, and I'm like, yeah, we're talking about Bigfoot here. That was a here. really great. That was a great impression, by the way. I was like, we're talking about. Thank you. We're talking about Bigfoot here, and you're really gonna like be Sam. 
Sam Elliott, can you give me like a little smirk? I've seen you do it before. I watched you do it in the Big Lebowski at the end of the fucking movie. I you, like your style, yeah, dude. You've you've <laughs> smirked before. Can I get that mustache on one side at the very least? Go up a little bit? Like, come on, dude. But there's none of that. It's just sad old man the movie. That's what this fucking movie is. And oh, it's great. I'm not saying it's not great. It's just I'm glad, not, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. It's not what I expected, and I wish I would have been warned ahead of time that this is a depressing movie. Because I was waiting, yeah. I was waiting for the flip. I was waiting for the like the flip where even when the Bigfoot stuff started happening, but even that was like, even there, there's big. First of all, I love the way they did Bigfoot. He looked very creepy and very scary. The eyes and everything like that. It was very scary. But he hunts down Bigfoot, and they have this like man versus wild moment where he's got the knife in one hand he's re- ready to go to fucking toe to toe with bigfoot and bigfoot's like Arr, i'm gonna get you <laughs> and he breaks his foot fu- he snaps his fucking arm and it's great it's it's a lot of really good stuff it's a lot of really good stuff i just wish i would have smoked before i watched it because <laughs> i might have been a little happier i came out I, okay. I honestly came out of this movie thinking like god i gotta get my shit together because i don't want to like grow up and be sad and old like I don't want to be sad, old, and lonely with no friends and family and everything like that. Holy shit! I see. I apologize for the sad old man aspect of it. Yes, you do feel sorry for his character, but let's talk about the young him first with the with the the secret mission to kill Hitler. I thought it was fucking awesome. Oh, it was great. How how it went down. I thought that was so cool. And then he makes the comment about. How he killed the real Hitler. He's yes. like, oh, they had a lot of other Hitlers. They had like four he's Hitlers. Like, yeah, he's like, you heard about that Operation Valkyrie, which they later termed into a Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. That was supposedly this almost to kill Hitler. He's like, well, they succeeded, but they killed Hitler number two. He's like, <laughs> and then and then the 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 Russians, the, the Soviets, when they were bombing Berlin, they actually killed Hitler number three. He's like, <laughs> Hitler, it wasn't till Hitler number four was the Hitler that committed suicide. He's like the coward. He's like, he's like the coward Hitler. He's like, yeah, the, co- the coward Hitler. Yeah, <laughs> basically, he's like, they had body doubles for him. He's like, I killed the first Hitler. I killed the original Hitler. Like, I was like, that's so fucking awesome. Like, that's so cool. Not, uh, not to add more sadness to the fucking movie, though, is he makes a point to say, I killed the first Hitler, but it didn't matter. Nothing didn't I matter. did matter. I killed one That's, man, yes. and it didn't matter at all because the idea still took hold. His, right. his ideas were bigger than the man. So he right. he went to war, left his love behind when he was ready to propose to her, never saw her again, all to do a mission that didn't fucking matter. Right. That's his point with how there was four different Hitlers. Three of them were killed one was killed by the US, one was killed by the Germans themselves, and the third one was killed by the Soviets. The well, fourth one took his own life. Like I thought that was such a cool thing because it didn't matter. Like he went on the secret mission, he pulled it off, he killed Hitler. It didn't fucking it's not that, matter. It's not that it didn't matter because they had more Hitlers. It's that it didn't matter because he said that the idea of the Nazi party and the ideas that Hitler pushed forward became so strong that it didn't matter whether he killed him or not. It didn't, right. it didn't matter at all because the, the ideals were still too strong for them to kill. That's, that's kind right. of like where it was. And I'm like, Sam Elliott, come on, dude. I've seen you in, I've seen, I saw you in Ghost Rider. You were great in Ghost Rider. You made me, you made me <sighs> like love you in Ghost Rider. You, that's the only reason why I enjoyed that movie is because I see you in there riding that flaming horse and shit like that, like digging graves. You made digging graves fun. Like he dug up his own fucking grave because they. At first, I thought he actually died, and I was like, "Well, oh, shit, he only had a fucking broken arm." And he, yeah, great. Okay, Bigfoot did bite his ear off, and then he broke his arm. But like that was it. Yeah, and it turns yeah, out he, did, faked, he wasn't he dead. Faked his death. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Spoiler. I don't understand why he faked his death, though, because he just ends up going back to his house, and then he ends up digging yeah. up, up his own grave because uh, his little brother buried that memorabilia box with him because he thought he was dead too. So he ends up digging up his own grave, and then he walks away in the fucking dark with his dog. Yep. And I'm like, <sighs> sad. So so sad. the part that I thought was strange was after the Hitler part when they went to the Bigfoot part. And 
you're right. Like the Canadians and the CIA, they approach him and they they tell him like what like what you said. For some reason, he was the guy that they needed because they knew that he was immune because fucking Bigfoot has a disease that can transfer to human because Bigfoot's been real this whole time <laughs> and they've always known. They've always known, but now Bigfoot has a plague, has a virus. <laughs> like, what? I'm thinking yeah. to myself, what? <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It, one, and the one... only fucking guy you can get to kill him is this old geezer. <laughs> it's it's uh, one one cool uh, thing about it when he after he first shoots shoots Bigfoot and he's talking to the government on that little walkie talk he has before he throws in the river. He's like, he doesn't have big feet, you know. But he's like he might, he's been a little misnamed, don't you think? <laughs> oh man! I think it's. I'm a, glad. A, you, I'm glad you liked it, though. It's I'm a glad ridiculous you premise it. that they managed to pull together, and Sam Elliott can do fucking anything he wants, and it would be amazing. I wish, I wish it was more like Inglorious Bastards and less like No Country for Old Men. Is what I'm gonna say. I wish it was more, little more fun. I I was thinking about it, and I was wondering if it would be had been better if the CIA, the governments had brought together a team because they said that wasn't just him that was immune. There were other they, they mm-hmm. found other people that were immune and stuff like that. But he was like the best tracker. But if they had like a team where it's like three people, him and like two of the young bucks, and the young bucks think that they know everything and they kind of bring a little lightheartedness to it, and somebody's like, "I'm going to show you what's what for," because he fucks up those two those guys who try to rob him at the beginning of the movie. He completely fucks them up like hardcore. And I was like, "Get him, Sam! Like, get those motherfuckers trying to steal your car, burn the only picture you have left of your lady." I don't know. It's it's a good movie. Just don't go into it expecting fun and lightheartedness. It, it's it's very serious. It's almost it's almost a little too serious, but it's very serious. But I think it's time we picked next week's Coerce of Cinema, Scott. Um, okay, okay. Or actually, are we doing? Okay, I got, we haven't talked about this yet, that? Scott. But are we doing Coerce of Cinema next week? Because yes, we have we some are. plans for it's our two hundredth episode, two hundred the big oh. two oh oh. So are we? I didn't know if we were going to do course cinema or not. Or if we yes, were... we st- we still are doing course of cinema next week. Okay, we still are just like normal. It's our favorite segments. It's everyone's favorite segments. And we were I was going to break this at the end, but you already popped the cherry. So to all the listeners, we have a very very special. 200th anniversary episode coming next week we have some surprises for you we have some old returning guests that i'm very excited for uh and we might even bring back uh some other segments adam oh really it's gonna be great i'm very looking very much looking forward to next week it's gonna be one of our best ones and our 200th episode to boot and yes to not piss off our fans we are still going to do Coercive Cinema next week. All right. Sounds good to me. So why don't we go ahead and uh, pick our next movies? Okay. I'll go first this time. Okay. Um, I have a movie for you, and it actually wasn't my first choice. I had a different movie picked out for you, and some time in the past week, it has been removed from streaming service. So I had to really quickly tonight scramble together to find another one. I knew what genre of movie I wanted to give you. So I am going to make you watch, Adam, your favorite. I'm going to make you watch a Western. Oh, boy. I can't wait to see them cowpokes. Uh, I know how much you love Westerns. So the Western that I was my second choice to pick for you, I'm going to make you watch the movie The Quick and the Dead. And it is on Amazon Prime Video. The Quick and the Dead on Amazon yes. Prime. Yes. All right. Just writing this down real quick. So, for you, Scott, I don't know how okay. this movie is gonna. I don't know how this movie is gonna be for you. It's. I'm. Di- I'm dipping into some weird stuff. Let's put it that way. I'm really Here dipping we into some weird stuff that's gonna be uh, that we're gonna be doing. Um. I. I kind of wanted. To have you watch Deadpool two or Year One or something like that, but you've already saw seen both of those. Really, yep, saw both. It for me. So 
I'm going to give you this. Now, I got a couple movies on here that I just found years ago on Netflix when I was perusing the... I watched a movie and it's like, oh, movies similar to this kind of thing. And I was like, oh, let me just browse through this. And I saw a couple movies on here and I watched them. They're weird. They're weird. Um... But the movie I picked for you for next week is a movie called Gerald's Game on Netflix. It's a movie called oh, Gerald's... that's a, that's a Stephen King book. I did not know this. Have you seen it? No. Okay. But Good. I'm, glad. I'm, I'm glad. familiar. I'm familiar with it. It's yeah, because I was talking. I was talking earlier how I'm watching The Stand, which is a Stephen King, and, and Gerald's Game is also a Stephen King. So. I was uh, not aware of Jared's game was a Stephen King, but yeah, yeah, I watched it. It's a it's a kind of horror psychological thriller kind of movie. Yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting, but it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have you watch Jared's game again on Netflix. Sounds good. If you want to get a hold of Four Distraction and you want to give us some ideas, hey, what about this movie? Have you guys seen this? Give these for ideas. You know, yada yada yada, whatever. T- tell me what you think of his Dark Materials. You know, I'm interested in talking about it now. Email at fourdistraction at gmail.com. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Search for your Distraction at Podcast FYD. We're on SoundCloud, iTunes. Search for your Distraction. We are also on Spotify and Google Play. Search Podcast FYD. Rate us, like us, share us with your friends. The only way we grow is if you guys help us grow. We are still a member of the Be Real Podcasting Network. Head over to Podbean and search for the Movie Guys Podcast. That is our official and official hub for the Be Real Network. They also upload them to YouTube. They upload the audio files there, so search for the Be Real Network. I think it's just Be Real, not The. So search for Be Real Network on YouTube. We are still a member of the Electronic Media Collective. Head over to Electronica or Electronic Media Collective. Electronica! Yeah. No, and it's too it's too futuristic. No, we're still electronic. Head over to electronicmediacollective.com and check us out on there as well. They also have a bunch of other really great shows. So how do you feel about uh 2021 so far, Scott? So far, so good. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic about the upcoming year. Uh, Again, super fucking excited about our 200th episode next week. Uh, A lot of big things. A lot of big things are coming this year. You know, let's make it a good year, Adam. Let's make it a good year.